Welcome to my How Healthy Are You weekly educational podcast. My name is Dr. Thomas Brewer. I'm a PhD chemist and nutritional blood microscopist. In this podcast, we're going to be talking about a link between the various organs and your health. And uh, I got this question just a few days ago, and the question was, is there a link between our organs and our health? And the answer is yes. This link was developed centuries ago, and a lot of this is related to Eastern medicine, whether it's from India, Ayurvedic medicine, or even in China. So there, there's definite, definitely a link with the organs. I'm going to go through all of them. You may want to get a pen and paper ready because uh, this is really useful information and it might be hard to memorize the first time around, but I will be providing some mnemonics so you can remember them. So we're going to start with the heart and most people easily recognize through literature that the heart is related with love and, and hearts on Valentine's Day and, and things like that. So all the organs will have a positive and negative emotion tied to it along with the problems that come from the negative emotion. So with the heart, which is a very emotional organ, on the positive side, we have love, quite obvious, and then, then on the negative side, we have hate or impatience. And this one usually doesn't require a mnemonic. That's why I started with the heart. So let's move on to the liver. And the liver is typically linked with the gallbladder and, and even the eyes. So uh, a few organs uh, linked together with the same emotions. Another emotional organ. And the bad emotion associated with the liver is anger and jealousy. And the good emotion is kindness and generosity. So you're going to notice the the good emotions are pretty much love, peace, and happiness, or, or some version or something related to those. Now, the mnemonic for the liver is when people drink too much, they tend to have cirrhosis of the liver, and since alcohol is a depressant, they get angry. So liver and anger make sense when you think of what, how you get a bad liver, um, perhaps drinking too much alcohol, and that leads to anger. So uh, liver, anger, jealousy on the bad side, and kindness, generosity on the positive side. Now, these organs also have colors associated with them, so I didn't mention this with the heart, but I think it's obvious. It's red, linked with blood, um, and with the liver, the color is green, and that's linked with bile. If you ever see a picture of bile, the bile is considered green. If you've ever seen, perhaps if you had gallstones and you finally expelled them, you'll notice that they're green. and they're made of bile. So all of this makes sense. Okay, moving on, uh, we'll go with the kidneys. Uh, the kidneys are associated with your bladder. Of course, that makes sense. The negative emotion is fear or trauma. And the mnemonic there is you were so scared, fear, that you peed your pants. So fear, trauma, kidneys, that's the negative emotion. So the positive emotion that's opposite of, of fear and trauma, fear and trauma is calmness or just silence. So 
Um, the color is blue, and of course, kidneys, water, blue water. So that's the mnemonic there. Okay. Moving on to the lungs. Most people also know that our skin is an organ. So the lungs and the skin are, are linked. And the emotion here, the bad emotion, is depression. Uh, normally you wouldn't think that uh, other than when you have a lot of depression, you can have blotches on your skin. Often when people do have skin irritation and they ask me what's the cause, if I don't see fungus in their blood, it is often linked to something going on emotionally with them. And that negative emotion is depression. Now on the positive side, the positive emotion is courage. So depression versus courage. The color for uh, the lungs is considered white. I don't have a good mnemonic for that, uh, but that's what it is. And then the fifth and final is the stomach, and the stomach related with the spleen and the pancreas. And we know that the pancreas makes protease enzyme, and that's how you digest your proteins, and that protease enzyme goes from the pancreas to your stomach, so it makes sense that the stomach and the pancreas are linked. And the negative emotion is worry and anxiety, and as we all know, if there's a lot of worry uh, by a person, they're going to generally have stomach problems. Um, the opposite or the good emotion is fairness and trust. So these would be people that, that uh, trust, and, and it's not difficult for them to trust others. So that's the main information. The color for the stomach is yellow. Uh, again, I don't have a good mnemonic for that color. Uh, most of the mnemonics or ways to remember work well when you think about the negative emotion. And also with the heart, it's more the positive emotion, which would be love. But the way Ayurvedic and, and some Chinese medicine, the way they grouped the organs, there were five groups. The heart um, was really grouped with the small intestine, which I didn't mention. But th let's just think of the heart uh, as a group, and then the liver, eyes, and gallbladder is another group. Of course, the liver and the gallbladder are connected anyway. Uh, the kidneys and the bladder was the third group. The lungs and the skin, the fourth group. And then the stomach and the pancreas, the fifth group. And they also had a way of linking these organs with the first so-called elements. So going way back before Mendeleev organized the periodic table of the elements, there was a belief that there were just a few basic elements, and they were earth, water, air, and fire. Um, and there's an extra one thrown in here, um, metal uh, is thrown in here with these organs. So going back, the heart is associated with fire. That really makes sense because it's a very emotional organ. And there's some books and literature that would link passion with fire and love and things like that. The liver... Um, let's say element, which isn't an element, is wood. And the kidneys element is water. Now, again, that makes sense because kidneys are associated with urinating. Um, the lungs are associated with metal, which isn't an element. Um, and I don't have a good mnemonic for that. And um, then the stomach is associated with earth. So Earth, water, and fire are included 
in these five groupings, but that's three of the five. The other two, they're not elements in the normal alchemy sense. Alchemy was really old chemistry, and that's the metal from the lungs and the wood for the liver. But if you were able to write some of this down, you may begin to realize some links between your health problems and the organs where you feel the problem. Or it could, it could go the other way. You feel something in an organ and you can link it back to the cause, right, where it's more of an emotional cause and you want to get rid of the bad emotion and you want to favor the opposite or the good emotion. So this is something to really keep in mind. It's, it's a nice little way to categorize and simplify the human body. I do this a lot in my seminars when I start talking about illnesses and problems with the human body. I, I take it back to the basic chemistry and what's going on in the body with respect to the organs and the diet and the enzymes and the immune system. So this is a different way of doing that. It's, it goes way back, thousands of years, but uh, it's, you'll see it, it works quite well. Okay, the second question we had was about iron, and uh, namely something called heme iron. And most of you may have heard of this, and the question is, does heme iron cause cancer? Well, heme iron is the iron that's found in muscle or muscle meat or red meat. Um, and this is a great way to get iron. Um, you may recognize heme as part of hemoglobin, and uh, the hemoglobin molecule is where there's an iron atom in the middle. So sometimes it's known as heme protein. It turns out you can also get heme protein in plants, and that's how the Impossible Burger works. Um, it has plant-based heme protein, and they mix that with some soy and some other additives, and they make the Impossible Burger. It's, it's quite uh, processed, but still a little better than red meat if, if you were to, to compare the uh, negative side of red meat versus the negatives with the Impossible Burger. The Impossible Burger wins a little bit. So this heme iron, there was always a thought that you increase your risk of colon cancer and DNA damage, DNA damage in the colon um, from this heme iron. So there's always been this link between eating meat and developing colon cancer. So high temperature cooking we know is bad when you grill food. It, it tends to make the problems inherent in the meat worse. Um, and this is from something called these heterocyclic amines. And uh, there's been some links between if you char the meat and you char the fats, that's like smoking a pack of cigarettes. And a lot of this is you have to take with a grain of salt. It's, it's pretty much exaggerated and extrapolated information. But still, in general, you don't want to burn the meat. Now, chemically, the problem with the heme supposedly is these nitroso compounds, and they get formed in the intestines. And that's really what you need to remember is these nitroso compounds are formed in the intestines while you're digesting the meat, and it ends up really hurting the probiotic balance between the good probiotics and the bad bacteria, which we need. We need this good balance. And the bad bacteria tend to multiply much more than the good probiotics. And the result is potentially DNA damage. So when studies are done, they're always studying exaggerated amounts of red meat and they use that in small animals, small rodents like mice and rats. And it, it's still, there's really not a good 
comparison because the numbers are one to 400 times what a normal person would eat in a day of red meat. The bottom line here is if you're going to eat meat, take probiotics. That will negate a lot of the problems that's formed uh, in your intestines, especially from red meat. Now, this uh, work and all the studies looking at the links between red meat and cancer, none of them are definite. It's still somewhat controversial. You probably know lots of people, including yourself, that eat a good amount of red meat and you're still fairly healthy. But maybe you're not. And, and what I always advocate is as you age, to decrease your meat intake. So that's all meat, not just red meat, but chicken and, uh, and other forms of meat lamb and pork, etc. So decreasing that intake as you age is a nice, happy medium, and you replace that with just more plant-based foods, which would be fruits and vegetables. That is what I recommend, and there's numerous benefits doing that, but most of the problems with meat consumption come as we age. And uh, so basically enjoy yourself when you're young, and uh, start cutting back as you age. So that's all I have for this week's podcast. I want to remind everyone that I will not be doing a podcast in two weeks. I will be in Nashville, Tennessee, or at least in the Nashville area in two weeks. So two weeks from today, no podcast. There will be a podcast next week, but uh, not in two weeks. So again, thank you for listening, and I'll be doing another podcast next week.